Okay, so I like the way Mary's expression. She's opening her mouth. <laughs> so many consider this video as really disturbing. Mm -hmm. I am trying to smile in the midst of all of these things just to calm myself down so we don't lose the crux of the matter. And this has brought the need to talk on parenting. Now, as a parent or someone who is parenting, you play an essential role in your child's life and you have the most important influence in their growth. Intentional parenting is an approach where you use strategies to build a healthy parent-child relationship, a healthy parent-child um, relationship, which then eventually provides opportunities for you and your child to learn and practice social and emotional skills. Now, social and emotional skills are important because they are linked to significant positive outcomes throughout the life so um, uh, of that child especially. Now, today we're asking, are parents intentional about parenting? Linking that to the Dalai Lama saga, what we just watched. Now, please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 803 You can also tweet at us at Wayshow, Africa One with the hashtag Wayshow. So I said to me, this conversation, there were too many things racing through my head. I remember when I was very young, there was a time that my parents, there was one, you know, the, the way all these out of, no, 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 these out okay. of um, state preachers come, like the general overseer will come mm. to the church and all of that. And he came, you know, and it's almost like, okay, I want to perform deliverance one to one. I mean, I'm very stubborn. I'll just be looking at you. Mm. I know they fall. You can do anything you want to do, you know. Like, so, the, there was, like, it was, there was an expectation that we need to be revered and all of that. Mm. But I, I don't have that. And, and this is why, for me, till today, it's a struggle for me to go and kneel in front of any man of God. It's not because of, I don't believe. I just believe that I have access. The way you have access that you're talking to God is the same way I have access to God. So I'm not those kind of people that will go and call a pastor pray for me. My mother will call me several times. I, it's, a, it's a genuine man of God. Though. Just this thing, you know, let it, she knows. She always tries her luck, but she knows that I will never respond to those kind of things. Mm. It's, not a, it's not a thing of, oh, maybe oh, I is just trying to be stubborn or why oh, it's trying to. It's just that there are some things that I do not just, it does not sit well in my system. So that aspect of a spiritual leader raised in my head, right? That, and I, I mean, thankfully, Unoma is here. You and I know Timmy Ibode. She has shared her story several times. Her first experience, her first, um, what's it called, encounter of rape, were pastors, right? They were pastors that raped her. Do you understand? It was not a, like a, a normal person on the street. It was somebody that's supposed to be a spiritual leader. Right, so she will be the one to always tell you that forget all these things. So, anything man or God, as long as there's something in between, he is a human being before mm -hmm. any spiritual whatever. So, that part of spirituality was racing in my head that okay, have, have this boy been trained not to question a spiritual leader? Mm. That's one. Has he been trained not to question someone that he considers uh, maybe older than him or somebody in authority? That's number two. Number three, has this boy been trained to say no? Because we always, we are used to saying, okay, 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 right? Because he could see clearly that the boy hesitated in wanting to, to when he said, suck his tongue. Like, he, he was taken aback. But he was not trained to say, no, sir, I'm sorry, it's inappropriate. Mm. Has this boy been given an introduction to sexual abuse and what it looks like? Has he been given an introduction to grooming and what it looks like? So that now overall summed it up for me that where were his parents when all of this was happening? Because all this boy simply asked for was a hug. You then moved on to his cheek and you give you a peck, you kissed him on the lip and you then brought out your tongue. Who are you? Even me were born picking. I, you know, I was racing through my head. I have never, I kissed my children on the lip, yes. But I have never brought up my tongue, come and suck my tongue. So what gives that this boy tomorrow, you not ask him to suck the other side? So I was really livid. But you see, I don't want to use anger to change the conversation. So tell me, first of all, what were your thoughts when you saw it? Because you opened your mouth. Because Mary did not understand it yet. She had not seen the video. So I like the expression. What were your thoughts? Why did you open your mouth? Because um, I, th I think it was, first of all, it was very disgusting. The fact that 
I mean, I know there are some hidden things that people do, but this is out there in the public and you're a spiritual leader. Like, were you high on something? Like, what, what, what's, what's even like, what kind of mistake? Like, out, like, you did it first time and you want to do it second time again? Like, suck my tongue? How? In public? Mary, that's not a mistake, oh. I hope you know. So, no, no I, I, I can't believe that it was a deliberate act. Okay. Mary hasn't processed. She has not processed I, it yet. I, I, no, 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 I, I, I can't. I think, I think there was something that struck me in the video. Um, if you watch towards the end, after he asked the little boy to suck his tongue, there's this playful way he beats the boy. Do you get? And to me, what I saw was someone trying to make it look like it was a That's child okay. that was being naughty. Hmm. Not him, the adult, who was being naughty. Now, you know when somebody comes and touches you, maybe person's flirting you with you, and you're like, stop it, Joe. Hmm. That was what I saw. And it just changed the whole... It changed the narrative a little bit for me because you know how, as a kid, when a little child or a little girl is abused and she reports... And everybody hears about it from gossip one person to another and then they, they spread it and make it look like oh she's she's the one who was it's being wayward she was the who one was, who was being at fault she's the naughty one it. exactly she asked for it and that was what i saw play out in that scenario because you can tell that the little boy was shy the little boy wasn't exactly sure okay is this right or is this wrong and that brings me down to my second point the fact that a lot of us as um, a lot of us, we don't question people in authority. We don't question our elders. We don't question spiritual leaders because we feel, oh, we shouldn't be doing that. I shouldn't question your motive. I shouldn't question your actions. I, couldn't, I shouldn't question what you have done. But I think it is time for us to actually sit down and realize that that is the worst way to live life, especially when you're talking about kids. We need to question these things. You should train your kids to the point where they can say no firmly and stand on it. They should be able to question things and say, why? I remember when we first moved to, to Lagos with my siblings. By the time we were entering the compound, the compound when we first moved, I think I was seven years old or eight. It was still these face me and slap you um, houses. But when we were entering... My father told us, my father lied to us that ah, when you go to come to Lagos, that is Oibo people here. That man has fed us lies. <laughs> so by the time I get into the compound, I was just seeing black people like me. I said, ah, but daddy, you say it's Oibo people that were coming here to see. <laughs> my father said, sure, you will soon see them. But as we we're entering the compound, something struck me. Now, I was working with my elder sister. And there were two, um, I think probably they were in their early 20s then. They were coming out of the compound. So they've known my dad because my dad used to live ph and then come to lagos for work so he has been living there for a while so he has built a relationship they knew him he had I probably mentioned that he had children but this was the first time they were meeting us and by the time we were entering one of the guys held my sister's hand and said my wife mm. and now at that age i found her very repulsive and very disgusting and i hit his hand hit it so hard and i shouted she's not your wife now why are you calling her your wife she's a small girl he now said, ah, so no, even, playing, if, yeah, no. even my parents were like, Jennifer, do you get Because they already know I was that child who would say no. I was that child that would question you. My father didn't teach me that. My parents didn't teach me to question. But I think maybe because I was exposed too early to a lot of things and they weren't just sitting right, right with me. So it was easy for me to it was easy for me to question these things. And I think also probably because some of my character traits, I got it from my dad. My dad would question things. So I think because I got that from him, it was very easy for me to question a lot of things. And at that age, it just did not sit right with me. But even at that age, with the fact that I was very outspoken, there were still a lot of things that I couldn't see. Because even in that compound, there were men there that were trying to sexually harass myself and my sister. Mm. I didn't even know they were doing it to my sister. It was when we got older and, and we started talking about it. about it. She was like, oh my God, this guy did the same thing to you. I said, yes, 
that he sent me to buy something for him and by the time i got into because i didn't even want to go because i already hated the way i saw the way he was moving around the little girls in the compound and how you, you will be passing the passageway and he will touch you in mm. a very and the way he will touch you you'll be thinking you're not sure mm. okay if i report now if anybody asks me what will i say what will i say mm -hmm. because this was very very dodgy what mm. he did just did not make sense but how do i communicate this to my parents that this was mm. what this person did mm -hmm. so i wasn't exactly sure so i was very weary of the guy so anytime i saw him in the passageway and i saw a little girl passing there i would follow the girl so when he does something i would scream and i would shout and just make some form of noise mm. so that the guy would would run away so one day he sent me oh buy me granite and gary i told him i'm not going he said that i'm being stubborn and you tell my father that they're sending me on an errand so i wasn't answering so i went and i bought it so i got to his door my plan was from the door i would give him so by the time i got to his door this man was waiting for me inside i said um i brought your granato and gary he said i should bring it inside i said can't you come out i was actually i was a rude child because if you overstep your boundary as an adult i'll be rude to you because to me i feel like you don't deserve, you don't deserve respect. the respect mm. anymore i can't give you that respect and that was what i did so by the time he said that he said oh that he's doing something so i should bring it inside so i opened his door i still stood outside and i was stretching he said that i should bring it that he so he was acting like he was busy doing something so i said okay no harm it's afternoon what what's the worst that could happen i can scream so by the time I got into his room, he was sitting on his bed and I gave him his Gary and Grano. Before I could step out, he was pulling me hmm. to his bed. And I looked at him and I said, if you touch me, I will scream. I will tell my daddy that this is what you do to all the girls in the company. He now said, no, he doesn't do that kind of thing. I said, I will report you. So he said, if you report, what will you say? So by the time I thought about it, I left his room and I went out and hmm. I said, ah, he's older. That man, I think that man was in his early 30s at the time. I was, I was barely 10 years old. And I thought about it, actually. What will I say? My father, first of all, will beat me for, for entering, yes, now, entering his the house. house. Yes, no. My dad will not even want to hear that this one, this one. The first thing he will ask you, why did you enter there in the first place? I thought I've told you not to play with boys or stay this, um, sit with men or even interact with men. That kind of thing. So because of situations like that and the repercussions of me reporting, I kept quiet. But everybody in the compound noticed I was always constantly insulting this man and being rude to him. But guess what? No adults Question. called me to the side to ask me why. why. Because yeah. now that I know better, if I see a child acting a certain way to an adult, I will ask questions. Mm. Because now I know better. So a lot of parents are not doing the work that they are supposed to do. Because they believe once you get to a certain phase in your life, is to give birth to kids mm. but by the time you give birth to kids there are a lot of things and responsibilities and things that you need to do to actually groom that child mm. and people need to start thinking about it before you give birth to a child mm. absolutely intentionality noma help me out here mm. <laughs> wow well, there's just so much so much to unpack about this i was completely disturbed when i saw this video i told you yesterday when i came in to the studio and I saw it was your story I said wow I, I it was too heavy for me to have that conversation yesterday not just because I'm a parent but because of the passion hmm. that we have hmm. when it hmm. comes to children yeah. hmm. I don't know how I developed that passion I don't know how we came to develop it way beyond before we became parents but it's something that my antennas are always up in protecting a child, not just my children, any a child. child. A child. Yeah. Huh. So seeing that from somebody that's highly revered, highly respected, it brought so many things. I don't even think this conversation will have the time to accommodate it. Well, let me just go to two things before um, you know, we move on. The power of the parent and the power of the child. Those are two things I saw play out in this scenario. Now, the power of the parent. The, per the parent is responsible. Okay, before I even go there, I want to say that it's not every person who has a child that is a parent. Definitely not. And it is not only those who have children that can be parents. False parents, yes. Those are very, very important 
things for us to pay attention to because sometimes a lot of people would say, oh, but I'm not a parent, like we heard some people say. <laughs> mm. And I say, it's not about having your own child. You don't need to have your own child to become a parent, to become responsible or an advocate for somebody who cannot stand up for themselves. Mm -hmm. And in our society, whether we like it or not, whether they say, oh, they can afford to do certain things now that we see in today's world, there is still that part that somebody needs to play in helping a child find the right direction for their life until they can now be responsible to do it for mm -hmm. themselves. So where I see the controversy going on today and the conflict of interest, that's another kettle of fish. Now, when you talk about a parent, a parent is somebody who is responsible emotionally, physically, psychologically, the first, the frontliner, let me put it, the first person that is responsible for the child before the society comes in, the environment comes in or school or whatever. You are the first person. And you are responsible to show the child the way that they're supposed to go. And basically creates that environment that allows the child to be able to thrive, to be able to be successful. And every child has the, is, is supposed to have that opportunity to live in a safe environment. So where the parent is not playing that role in creating that safe environment for the child is where we need to pay attention to. The parent is the one that has a right to help the child know that this is leading to the right direction and this will lead to destruction. So anybody, that's why I say that anybody can be a parent because back in the days, if you remember, when somebody will see someone's child, they say, are you not so so person's child? Mm. What are you doing here? Yeah. Start running home they will beat your you. parents. Yes. They will Things beat like you. That. When you get home and, and they, they will get, your parents will beat you again. I had a, <laughs> because a of issue. I had a church member. I was just walking with the guy. Before I reached the church, the news had gotten to my mom uh -huh. that I was seen with a man. I was just walking. Even if they were asking you a question, so those are the kind of things that we grew up in. But with the society now, everybody, everybody for himself yeah. and things like that, mm -hmm. things have gotten so bad. Now, the second thing is about the power of the child. The child, whether you are, whether it's about your personality, whether you're quiet, you're shy, or this or that, every child deserves to have a voice. Yeah. Every child deserves to be able to express themselves, to say how they're feeling. You know a quiet child, you know when they are acting out of character. Mm -hmm. That is the responsibility of the parent because if you know your child well you enough, there are things that you need to pay attention to. When they tell you that, oh, this child did this, you say, no, That's not, not this child. child. Yes. And there are the things that they'll tell you, you said, Ex I, I, I didn't expect child. anything yes. less. Mm -hmm. I know that child. Now, you were able to express yourself because you, from, it was innate in you. Yeah. You could, from, I mean, you had that. Man, Nobody could take that. Uh, but guess spirits. what, Uwa? <laughs> there are some children whose voices were stolen. Yeah. My sister and the people so around were not able to pay attention to, to protect, notice. to notice, and to advocate for that child. Mm -hmm. And we've lost a lot of children in the adults that you see today. Absolutely. Yeah. So you see a lot of adults who have lost their voices because there was no one to, to protect them at the time. And they have even become defenseless parents to children of the future. I think you should pause it there because that is where I think the problem lies. Because yeah. if a parent, the voice has been dimmed, you don't even know to point out a red flag. That's why when Jennifer said, she hit the, sister, uh, the man's hand of the sister that she's not your wife or not. The parents were trying to calm her down. But you see, again, these are things quietly. Let's take a break. I want to open our phone lines. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Right, so if you just tuned in, it's our ladies' night out, and we are trying, you know, to just be a bit less emotional 
and try to address this thing because I believe that for every situation like this, I always have moments of lessons for my children. Mm -hmm. If something happens, it's a teaching moment. You don't let it slip. You don't let it slide. So if you are a parent out there, you know, and you're not educating or empowering your children, now would be a good time to listen. Because we're discussing this Dalai Lama saga, and we're asking our parents um, intentional about parenting. Now, please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation, send us an SMS, or WhatsApp to 0818038463. You can also tweet at us at Wayshow Africa 1 with hashtag Wayshow. Our phone line is now open. Remember, turn off the volume of your television set. The number to call is 070 That's the number to call. Remember to turn off the volume of all your appliances that you're watching us from. I mean, so, no, my, so you, you, you drove me where I was going. Because you see, hurting people hurt others. That's what they say. Mm -hmm. So it's just now. If you know better, you will do better. The fact that you can conceive a child biologically does not qualify you to be called a parent. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are not equipped to be parents. These people have been through abuse. It's just like a woman mm -hmm. or a man that has seen all sorts of damaged, like his emotions is completely damaged or her emotions are completely damaged as a result of consistent or constant emotional abuse or even physical abuse. Do you think she would have the capacity to raise wholesome children. It's not possible. She must go through some level of mind reprogramming, shaping, and therapy for her to be wholesome enough to then see this human. Because you know why? If something is happening that looks like a semblance of what she went through, yeah. is happening to her child, she would say, mm, I went through it. She would, she would rise above it. Yeah. She would be defenseless. She would it's not even have, yes. Circle. It's a very vicious circle. From one generation because to the other. the adults around the Dalai Lama laughing. Nobody raised the red flag to say, ah, it is very wrong. Very concerning. That this is wrong. You know? Maybe you're going to say something. Um, I think the, the, the two, two things I'm seeing out of this is in, in the training of a child, um, sometimes I would say the parents don't know better because of what they've gone through and, you know, the whole suppressed voices because, and then there's also teaching the child to be able to say no in circumstances, whether you're a quiet or shy person, because I'll take a personal story, for example. My, I, I don't remember my mom giving me any definite training on, you know, response to such things. But somehow in my head, I just knew it wasn't nice. So maybe there's a certain priest where, you know, she, she's just doing her own thing innocently. Oh, did you go and greet Father? But I, Father is saying something, a different thing on WhatsApp. And I'm thinking, uh-uh. But you're a priest. Like, how would you say this kind of thing? But I, I, I don't go to my mom to tell her this is this. But what she would do is, if she sees that you are just somehow refusing to, you know, move towards this person, she will let you be. So that's a silent approach. That's not a definite approach. Because you have not told me definitely to say, if you have an advance from this kind of person, the response should be no. You've just done it in a silent manner to say, ah, it's not good, or well, don't. Well, Barry, don't, don't forget that you are an adult now. If you were a child, would your mother's approach be would have, would would it have been different? Yes, but then this this I I would just literally it's like it's like an uncle coming to the house, and she say, oh come and greet this person, and I and I had I was given the choice to say, oh I don't want to come downstairs, I'm upstairs, and I have an uncle who oh okay they come early in the morning drink or go go room my dad. And for some reason, I just, I just don't want to go. I wasn't, I wasn't forced, but I, I wasn't, you know, told or, you know, spe it, it wasn't anything. spelled out like that, yeah. you know. But I was just allowed to have my opinion, 
you know, so you don't want to. How was you getting to, a voice? So, so she, you were not, you were never silent. Some children don't have an opinion. And just, if I tell you, get up and go and say hello to father, you go and greet father. Don't mm. forget that it was also a taboo at the time. It's not something yeah, you to, talk to, yeah, about. To have this it, kind, you true, didn't have true sit that, downs with true parents that, at true the that. time. Say, yeah. okay, these are the expectations. Or if somebody, the, the, those things were not common at the but, time. But, but now we're talking about people. But being, now you know, we need to be more intentional about it because Most, social media and then the internet has <laughs> just made everything so bizarre so back to what i was saying about a lot of voiceless parents now and mm. defenseless parents now being the ones at the front line how do you fight a battle that you are not trained for you can't you can't fight that battle you don't have the skills you don't have the arsenal Capacity. to be able to fight the battle so we have a lot of people who are in the position of parenting children and they don't know what to do mm. because they are held back by the traditions of the past where it was silence. We don't talk about things like that. Even though we are still in, uh, we're in the age of social media and you know people doing things, everything goes viral and stuff like that. And we're beginning to have those conversations. But there are a lot of people that are still dealing with those challenges. Yeah. And the point being that a lot of children are still vulnerable mm. to abuse one way or the other. And they still need to be protected. So what we can do today is to be able to let parents know that these are things that need okay. to be discussed. These are things that need to be taught children. I've got children who are of various types. They're the ones that express themselves very, very easily. They're the ones that have that intimate conversation. They're the ones that are seemingly calm, but in their calmness, you know that the calmness has different levels. Mm. So you know when someone is really calm, then this is not, this is out of character. So if I did not understudy my children, I wouldn't know when things are wrong. And I've also had that conversation with them where, this, where no matter what it is, whatever you want to talk about, let's talk about it, even when you are in the wrong. So you mm. see them coming to tell you, oh, I did this and that and that and that. that, and, that and, and it's like, okay, so how necessary. do you feel? Is it right? Is it wrong? Where do you even place yourself? Or what could you have done better mm. given the, a different situation or if you really talk uh, thought about it mm, okay maybe i should have handled it this way or that so now they're able to express themselves and they talk about literally any, anything as long as they're not comfortable about this is happy and i don't like it and now i understand why you don't like it this is this so if in your own situation you had a voice even though there was no proper training mm. right but now it's important to be intentional with proper training so that children can easily identified because the you could see the, the child the was very uncomfortable yes. initially with first of all he was okay with the hug and, and then, then when then, he drew his face to the peg you know, and you drew his face to the to his lips there was a hesitation young, yes and just in addition the parents could have also been in the crowd uh smiling and then also being uncomfortable with what the situation what? is, but they, they could not help. They could not yeah. run to the stage and say, "Bring my child." They could have been also there, feeling helpless as well. So it's important that parents or guardians. I don't just want to restrict this to parents. Guardians need to be sensitive, and like I said, we can't overflow it. These conversations need to be had with children because don't underestimate the child of today. They know much more than what you, you, you think know. they know. Mm -hmm. So like Uwa uh, had mentioned earlier when she said, okay, that this is a teachable moment. I, by, you know, from time to time, I ask, oh, did you hear about this news? Oh, yes. So can you imagine that what kind of person is it? Now oh, you have you the have opportunity to feel the pulse, mm -hmm. how they themselves are thinking about the situation. So it's not just about having a conversation with them enforcing your own rules and regulations. Them, Ask them how they, they feel, feel about yeah, the situation. Think, what yeah. do they think? Some of them, you might be surprised when you say, oh, I wish I was there. Mm. I could have just given him a slap on the face. That's, so they are even potential future advocates. Absolutely. Mm. Let me take Karen from the US. Karen, are you there? 
Hello? Yes, I am. Hi. Oh, hi. Thank hi, you for everyone. calling. Hello? Go, go ahead. We can hear you. You're live. Oh, okay. Um, I just, I, I started watching, I started watching uh, about halfway through the show. Go ahead. I just want to say that um, things have always been bad. I was 28 before I could say anything. So let's start from the people that we employ in our homes. Because we always seem to think that the, the bad guy or the bad woman is not bad. It starts from the house help or the chef in the house or the driver or mommy's driver, daddy's driver. So they're within the home, but we're, we're teaching our kids to always look at the stranger outside. Thank you. So I was 28, if I could say anything. Absolutely. Thank you, Karen. Um, and I, he I hear you clearly. And I want to say this, that um, abuse or abusers, rather. Are familiar people. Are familiar people. They are not people that are far from you, and, and you're very correct. Um, if you go and hear the stories of people that were abused sexually as children and all of that, they will tell you, oh, there was one uncle that was living with them, there was one auntie that was living with them, you know, there was their driver, some even their parents, you know, their parents actually are the first abusers. So it's true. Um, for me, what was worrisome for me in all of this is the, the audacity that somebody had in the presence of, you know, every... So that's to tell you if this boy was secluded in a room with this person, right? Maybe God just needed that to happen so people can just, you know, wake up. And, you know, I mentioned when I started the conversation that our common friend that, you know, made us to fall in love with doing the work of going to schools, we, we used to go on tours to go and talk to children on subject of sexual abuse, um, what's it called, their vision, their personal hygiene, etiquette, and all of those things. We used to teach them power of the power of your decision, the power of your choices, you know, how you know when you're being groomed. Mm. So some of the people are not, this guy clearly is a groomer, yeah. right? He is not coming out right to say but that, actually, come and suck my genitals. But he's grooming the boy, because what he did, the steps, these are steps of grooming. Mm. I tried a hug, you gave the hug. You, you know, I tried the peck, you, you gave the peck, you were still comfortable. I tried the kiss on the lip, I saw a little bit of hesitation, you still came, you leaned forward and you gave me the kiss. Then of course I would try the tongue. The next thing, where do you think he was going? If there, were no, if there was nobody in that room, that would have been the next. He would just say, come and suck my cock. You know, that would have been the next line of action. So there are even those ways to identify. So when we used to do all of those school tours, we see, our ear don't fool. Parents, father abusing daughter, mother abusing son. This is your biological parent. It's not like you borrowed a child or you, or you went to adopt a child. Your biological children. So when Karen is talking about first abusers are from the home front, she's absolutely right. Yeah. Right? Uh, what we are just advocating now is that opportunities like this, parents should seek their children back. Because again, we are so quick to say, because we, we find it uncomfortable to make the next person uncomfortable or to disappoint the next person. Yeah. Be happy disappointing people. Yeah. You know, so now before, if they tell me, say, oh, wow, I'm really disappointed in you. I would feel bad. I don't feel bad. I'm happy to disappoint you. If, you're dis if di me disappointing you, mm -hmm. it means I'm protecting my sanity, please, by all means, I will disappoint you. Because you see all these things in a bit to try to please people. Because... You would have easily said no, but guess what? It has been a national disgrace. Headline, a boy refuses, whatever. But it is better. I have protected my sanity. I have protected myself. Right? But we don't want to disappoint people. And that's why when somebody is being abused, a girl, she, she's afraid, what if I scream? Or, you know, because that's ideally, the they need you to be quiet. The you. The, the environment Everything silences, silences you. you. And I always say this thing, that sin thrives in secrecy. Right? Mm -hmm. If you continue being quiet, abusers that were in the home front, what happened? Once this news came out, there was a friend of mine. Her, her, her nephew, right? 
her nephew was abusing her child. Nephew that her, I mean, the, the spouse's um, 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 older sister's son, he was older, he's his mid-teens or um, almost late teens, abusing her 10-year-old, was performing this stuff with him from behind. Mm. It was when the 10-year-old was trying to now practice on the younger brother that the oh news came God. out because he didn't know. So he thought it was something that was normal. Oh. So the younger brother said, I will shout, I'll tell mommy, I'll tell mommy, I'll tell mommy. She now said, tell mommy what? Because every time she's around, she used to be the one to bathe them. That, oh, this person is trying to put his wee-wee in my bum bum. She literally, you know when your heart will sink? She literally passed out and woke up and said, what did you say? So they started doing the investigation and now found Trist out it, Trist it back. that it was somebody that was living within the home. I'm praying that today that boy has really recovered. But you see some of this madness that you see in adults today? There is a deep-seated issue from abuse and all of that. You see a girl holding herself. History. She doesn't want to whatever. Go and check it. Me, I was like you. I'm the one that will shout to. I will make all the... My mother, I'm very stubborn. Do it. I say, no. why would I agree the person? Do you understand? So even abusers run away from stubborn children. Yeah. Because they know that they they only they always they pray. The, yes, they, they pray on the out. ones that are um, reclining, hiding, and all of that. So you must teach your children boldness. Mm -hmm. Confidence. You must teach them that confidence to be able to step up to anybody, whoever you are. I'm sorry, but you're wrong. I cannot I cannot suck your tongue. It is wrong. That's your private part, and I cannot suck it. Just imagine if that boy said that. Yeah. Then I will know that yes, the parents have done a good job yeah. with that boy. You understand? Even that kiss himself. That's where I should. That's where I would have stopped. I would have, no, no. I'm still. It's it it no, is no. still good because in some in some cultures, kiss a, a peck on the cheek. You know, I'm, I'm married to. I, we have an in-laws that is a uh, French. Now they go kiss you, kiss you everywhere. You go just kiss, kiss everybody. So it's fine. You know, some cultures even accept kissing on the lip. That is their own way of greeting you, showing you you are welcome. But when you now bring out your tongue, and the boy could not say no. I said, no, this has to go back he to the shyly, parents. He shyly, he shyly, you, you understand? Know, it has to go back it. to the parents. And this is not me trying to say, oh, uh, this is because everyone is quick to say we're always accusing parents, 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 parents. No. We're saying that if today you too, you are a parent that you are watching, and you have not started teaching your children, you must teach them. Even I, it is in old age I learned how to say no. Yeah. Do you understand? Even, even hugs, even hugs. Do you understand? Like, Some people I, are like, yes. As I'm now, I'm learning that. It's not and everybody you want. Everybody. Really Anything not everybody. that makes you feel uncomfortable, uncomfortable. please by all means Stand say no. Say Stand up. And it's it's the most about like I said, it's the power <laughs> that you can give a child, the ability to express how they feel and be okay with it. Because that's another thing. Yeah. You know, growing up back when we were growing up. They were not allowed to, you know, if they said, go and greet an uncle, you say, mm, I don't feel, nobody asked questions. That's where you were talking about, Jennifer, mm. about saying, oh, why are you, you know, what's wrong with this So someone person? says, so it's important. Sanctus, he says, please, you need to find out if what happened between Dalai Lama and the boy was part of their culture. Maybe we are just experiencing culture shock. Or could not be culture shock? Because even the Dalai Lama came out to apologize. To apologize. What do you it's not culture, culture shock. shock. Do you understand? I've never seen any culture that will stick out his tongue and tell him, suck my tongue. They bring out their hand for you to kiss their hand. Do you understand? Some cultures, yeah. they'll bring out their hand for you to kiss their hand. They can give you a peck on the cheek. Some give a peck on the, on the, on the, on the lip, but not bringing out your tongue. You know, if it was a cultural thing, he would not have come out to apologize. Comments like this upset me and ex my soul so mm. much because these are the type of people that are always looking for a different angle. No, he's mm. no, no, he, 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 good. I, for, no, we don't I, have time. I, I, get, I, get, I, get, I get, I get, I get that mm. that he's asking about culture, but you read the full story, and that's where I'm coming from. Mm. The full story because he, who is supposed to be the spiritual leader, came out. To, to apologize, apologize. Mm. if he didn't apologize and the people from his 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 
right. whatever, right. has have backed him up and said, oh, that's our court. That's a different thing. But that wasn't mentioned. And if it was part of their culture, he wouldn't have apologized. So why are you coming from that angle? Just quickly, One very quickly, the, what he was also saying, the person that sent this message, it goes back to culture, mm. the culture of silence. Mm. Rather than deal with a situation, would rather paint oh, it, yeah. cover it, yeah. because of who is also connected to. Mm. So a spiritual leader. Absolutely. So we have to run off. Sorry, we have a very, very disturbing message here. Somebody's crying. Ah, we're going to we're going to deal with this issue now. Please, um, before we go, ensure you send us and uh, uh, follow us across all our social media handles. If you missed our quote for today, here it is again. This thing is deeper than what we're saying. You know, I'm just trying to not be emotional here. That's why I'm quiet. We must protect families. We must protect children. We have um, an inalienable right, and um, who have inalienable rights and should be loved should be taken care of physically, mentally, and should not be brought into the world to suffer in any form. Please, please, let's start to talk to our children. Parents, you need to protect your children. Oh, yes, the right. world is vicious, so you must viciously guard your children. I don't joke with children, anybody that knows me. Please, we'll bring back the conversation. It has not ended. See you guys tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen.